Yes. Uh, as I was saying in the last session, we uh, we are discussing uh, different types of power factor measurement devices. We have two types of power factor measurement devices. One is the electrodynamo meter type, and second one is the moving iron uh, power factor measurement device. So we have already seen the electrodynamo meter type. Uh, both the single phase as well as the three phase uh, in the moving iron based uh, we have two subtypes the rotating field type and the alternating field type so we were actually discussing the rotating field type So we have already discussed the three phase type uh, rotating field uh, power factor measurement device. Now we will be looking at the single phase one. This is the three phase uh, rotating field type uh, power factor measurement device. Uh, as discussed in this, it works on the principle of rotating field uh, just like an induction motor. You have three sets of coils A1, A2, A3. They are the current coils. They are carrying the three phase currents. So they will produce their own magnetic field while as uh, the coil P it will be it's also fixed uh, it's connected between two phases so an AC current is flowing through coil P as well and it will produce its own magnetic field because of the interaction of the two magnetic fields a torque will be produced that will cause the rotation of the veins and this vein uh, the veins will rotate as long as the torque will balance out and cancel out each other the three torques that will be generated by the three coils will actually be balanced out and also we discussed in this that we need to have damping veins uh, so as to make sure the oscillations uh, there is some damping in the system because of the nature of the rotating magnetic field it will cause the rotation forever we need to damp out uh, we need to make sure the system is uh, the system does not go into os it does not go into oscillations forever and it ultimately stops the road we need to take a measurement now we'll be looking at the single phase type this is the single phase type uh, now you can see uh, there are you have, uh, you have the uh, phase and the neutral and how we actually basically arrange this system we are connecting uh, one current coil that's A1 via resistance fine principle of operation of the single phase type will be similar to the three phase type we have only to understand how that's possible so in this case what we do is one coil one set of current coil will be connected to the uh, two lines uh, the phase and the neutral via a resistance R the, these are current coils A1 is connected uh, via R while as the coil current coil A2 it is connected to the supply through an inductance L and the third coil is connected to the supply uh, via a capacitance and as far as the coil P goes uh, it is connected to the supply and the, lo and to the load fine in this case coil P is connected in series uh, in 
the supply and the load so what happens is we choose some particular values of L and C such that uh, the phasor diagram of the system will look something like this I1 is the current flowing through coil A1 I2 will be the current flowing through coil A2 and I3 will be the current flowing through A3 I1 if it is the reference I2 will be lagging and I3 will be leading uh, because of the nature of the inductance and the capacitance now we choose particularly those values of L and C such that this angle this phase difference between I1 and I2 is 60 degrees I3 I1 and I3 is also 60 degrees so choose suitable values of R L and C such that 60 degree angle is obtained between 60 degree angle is obtained between I1 and I2 and between I1 and I3 your supply is connected to the load so load will also cause a phase difference but choose particularly those values of RL and C such that I2 is 60 degrees behind I1 and I3 is 60 degrees ahead of I1 and after this what we do is we actually reverse the connections of the coil segment I1 so this is the phasor diagram under normal conditions fine so as I was saying reverse the connections of of coil A1 so once you reverse the connections of coil A1 what will happen is that uh, I1 was like in this direction now I1 will be shifted in this direction so I1 uh, will shift in the negative direction I2 will be at its own I2 and I3 initially I1 I2 and I3 were like this now after we reverse the connections of A1 I1 I2 and I3 will be in this direction so that we can obtain uh, 120 degrees in all the three segments so once this is done now this becomes a three phase system so like uh, the three phase system uh, we can similarly say that uh, you can balance out the equations you have the torques being produced by I1, I2 and I3 you can balance out the equations you can balance out the torque and ultimately we'll see that phi will be equal to theta it's the same equation that I showed in three phase system will be applicable here so this is the f uh, single phase single phase type wherein A1 is connected via resistances A2 are is connected via inductances and A3 is connected via capacitances and choose suitable values of RL and C such that I1, I2 and I3 have an angle of uh, I1, I2 and I3 are I2 and I3 rather are 60 degrees to I1 one will be lagging and the another one will be leading so A1 A2 A3 are the current coils coil P that is the pressure coil will be connected in parallel with the uh, supply uh, so once the currents are flowing through A1 A2 and A3 AC currents they will produce their magnetic field coil P will produce its magnetic field the interaction of the two magnetic fields will cause a torque that will cause the veins to rotate the structure of the vein will be similar it will be cylindrical with two guiding veins and two dampening veins uh, so the thing is this is a single phase system there will be one phase and a neutral 
you have to connect RL and C in such a fashion uh, you have to choose the values of RL and C such that initially you get the values 60 60 60 and once uh, that is obtained you can reverse the directions you can reverse the phase connections of A1 the current coil A1 such that I1 is 180 degrees behind now that will actually cause 120 degrees between I1, I2 and I3 उसके बाद ये जैसे थ्री फेस सर्किट थ्री फेस मूविंग आयरन पावर फैक्टर मेजरमेंट डिवाइस था वैसे ही फिर सिंगल फेस मूविंग आयरन पावर फैक्टर मेजरमेंट डिवाइस विल वर्क इन द सेम फैशन सो योर फाइ विल बी इक्वल टू थीटा सो योर मैकेनिकल एंगल ऑफ द रोटेशन ऑफ द वेन्स विल गिव अस द मेजरमेंट ऑफ द फेज डिफरेंस बिटवीन द वोल्टेज एंड द करंट सो वी कैन मेजर पावर फैक्टर as well as the phase using this uh, device the single phase moving iron instrument that's actually working on the principle of rotating magnetic field rotating magnetic here a rotating magnetic field is produced in order to nullify the effect of rotating magnetic field we will be using damping vanes so that's all about the rotating type now you have the alternating type So this structure here is the uh, structure of a power factor measurement device that's working on the principle of alternating fields uh, rather than uh, rotating fields. So what is the construction first of all? In case of the rotating field type, the important thing was that is that you have three current coils and one pressure coil. In this structure, you will be having three pressure coils and one current coil. So in this very particular structure, P1, P2 and P3, they represent the pressure coils. And this, uh, this here represents the current coil. this helical structured uh, it's one uh, it's only one coil that's connected that's arranged in a helical fashion the coil side a and a so there's only one current coil and you have three pressure coils in this case p1 p2 and p3 so you have three sets of guiding vanes instead of one guiding vein uh, So these, this is one set of vein, this is another set of vein, and this is the third set of vein. So you have here three sets of pressure, you have three pressure coils and three sets of guiding vanes and one current coil. Now these guiding vanes, uh, these actually, these actual vanes that actually cause the rotation, that are actually rotated and that actually cause the deflection they'll be located uh, 120 degrees to each other their planes of references will be 120 degrees to each other so if uh, v1 represents one set of guiding vein v2 represents another set of guiding vein v3 represents another set of guiding vein so they will be uh, located 120 degrees to each other their planes of reference will be 120 degrees to each other and uh, these pressure coils are connected to three phase circuit uh, three phase systems v1 v2 v3 in parallel and via resistances r and you also have the damping vanes they are located 180 degrees to each other you have two da damping vanes uh, that are located uh, 180 degrees to each other 
so now what is the theory of this uh, it actually works similar to that of the rotating field based there you had three current coils that were producing three magnetic fields here you have the three pressure coils connected to uh, a1 a2 and a3 three different uh, <coughs> you have uh, three pressure coils also i forgot to mention here these pressure coils are separated from each other through this s what is this s is a non magnetic material the three pressure coils they are electrically iso isolated magnetically isolated rather and it's a non -ma non magnetic material uh, this s uh, that actually separates the pressure coils p1 p2 and p3 uh, the these p1 p2 p3 they are electrically uh, connected in star fashion the guiding vanes are magnetically isolated from each other now what happens is that once you apply uh, once these potential coils are in parallel to the voltage the three phase voltage they will produce their magnetic fields and since they are mechanically located 120 degrees to each other so the magnetic fields will also be located 120 degrees to each other the current coil will be carrying its own current and uh, the main current rather of the system it will produce its own magnetic field so the two sets of magnetic field will cause the rotation of the device will cause the rotation of these uh, vanes these guiding vanes so they are fitted on the pivots and bearings in such a fashion that they can rotate individually so because now of the interaction of these three pressure coils and the current coil and the nature of construction uh, the and the nature of uh, construction uh, as well as noting that they are 120 degrees located separated from each other they will be similar to that of uh, the rotating field based system there the difference was that the current coil was producing a three phase magnetic uh, was producing the uh, magnetic field the three current coil were producing magnetic fields here it will be the pressure coils that will be that are there are three pressure coils here that will be producing the magnetic field that will cause the actual torque production in case of current in case of rotating field based it was the current that was responsible for uh, generation of torque uh, electricity uh, that was uh, that had the that was phased different from one another in this case it will be the pressure coils that will be responsible for generation of torque that will be uh, phase different from one another the thing will be you will get the same equation torque in this case will also be uh, ultimately equal to once it is balanced out it will be uh, equal to cos of 90 minus once it's balanced out the net proportional torque cos of 90 minus phi as was the case with the rotating field type sine of 90 plus theta plus cos of uh, 330 minus phi sine of 210 plus theta the difference is in case of rotating field type it was the torque it was the three currents that was responsible for generation of these three uh, phase aligned quantities while as in case of the alternating field type 
it will be the voltage that will be responsible for uh, generation of these three uh, phase aligned quantities fine in one case there are three fluxes due to three line currents displaced from one each other by 120 degrees but in this case it will be the three fluxes due to the three voltage that will cause the displacement of those three fluxes 120 degrees in space so the relationship between the angular deflection of the moment of the veins uh, and the pointer extra will be uh, same as that of the phase angle of the system uh, it is applicable in both cases in both cases phi will be equal to theta the basic mathematical equation will be same and uh, you have the damping veins here again they will be uh, used for used for controlling the uh, system oscillations and for damping out the system oscillations So talking about the advantage of uh, the moving iron based power factor instruments over the electrodynamometer meter type power factor measurement device. torque or the force that is created here is much larger as compared to that in case of the electrodynamometer type uh, so that is one advantage of this moving iron based system another advantage of this uh, system is that uh, the coils uh, in this case are fixed both the current coils as well as the pressure coils are fixed in this case it was the veins it was the cylindrical structure that was actually rotating uh, in, uh, but in case of electrodynamometer type it was the pressure coil that was actually rotating the coils uh, were not fixed so uh, in case of uh, electrodynamometer type you need to have an arrangement wherein you can uh, cater the problems associated with rotating coils like having an arrangement of slip rings, brushes, etc. Moving iron instruments uh, are quite efficient as compared to electrodynamometer type and they will be able to measure phase as high as up to 360 degrees exact while as in case of electrodynamometer type the scale does not accept extend up to 360 degrees and rest of the advantage like they are cheaper they are simpler in construction as compared to that of electrodynamometer type so these are some of the advantages of the moving iron based power factor meters over the electrodynamometer types
so the disadvantage uh, that are uh, associated with this since one it's an iron based system moving iron instruments iron based so there are losses associated with uh, the iron so errors errors will be introduced in this meter because of uh, the iron parts and uh, you know you have the eddy current losses you have the hysteresis losses so these losses will be frequency and load dependent and su as such and that uh, reduces the efficiency accuracy of these devices uh, and secondly calibration is poor in this case 